So uh, uh, I'm Dr. Taufik Panjwani, and uh, these are my disclosures. So everybody probably remembers this year. This is 2007. Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone to the world. And we are now here about 15 years down the line. And Apple has sold about 2.2 billion iPhones. So just to keep this in perspective, that last 15 years, our world has changed by leaps and bounds. You know, everything that we know is connected to each other. Our cars, our air conditions, including the light bulbs in a bathroom is connected to the internet, right? So and it's not just it's not just the devices which are connected, you know, the way we travel, the way we eat, and the way we transact with each other financially is, is also changed. But our post-op rehab is still 15 years down. Okay. We have now started to give it to give instead of paper handouts, we've started giving PDFs of exercises to the patient. And the home physiotherapist still visits the patient at home for rehabilitation and post-operative care. So nothing in terms of post-operative rehab and nothing in terms of post-operative care has changed in the last 15, 20 years. Why remote patient monitoring? Why do we think that we need to remotely monitor our patients? You know, The reason is, what is the most important question the patient and the relative asks before surgery? is recovery mein kitna time lagega? The most important question is how much time and what will be the process of recovery? Okay. Majority of the period of recovery, 90% of the period of recovery is basically out of sight from the treating team. The patient is at home. We don't know what is happening to our patients right now who we have operated about three weeks back. So it, it's, really, it's really a big black box that, that we don't know of how the patient is recovering after surgery. Also, the current rehab protocol is very, very intermittent. You know, the home, the physiotherapist visits home maybe once, twice or thrice a week. Uh, the visit lasts for about 45 minutes to one hour. And rest of the times, what is happening with the patient, how's the patient doing, whether the patient is walking or not walking, we don't know exactly what, what is happening with the patient. Patient, so uh, Dr. Paduwal mentioned about PROM data. You know, do we really need to collect PROM data, can't we just passively collect data from whatever the patient is doing uh, from on the, in their daily lives? You know, don't you think passively collected outcome measures would make more sense than PROMs? Also, in the current, you know, in, in, the, in the current care, where is the patient feedback? Where is the patient engagement? You know, we don't know what is happening with the patient. There's no back and forth between the patient as well as the treating team. And that's where the gap is, you know. The most important, uh, uh, the most most important concern of the patient is how will their recovery be after surgery, and we really don't know what's what's happening with the patients when they are at home. So last three years we've just been scratching the surface in terms of um, in terms of research in patient monitoring after after surgery. I'll not go through a lot of details. Uh, this is all available uh, in Journal of Arthroplasty. So this this was Zimmer, which has introduced the My Mobility app. They give an Apple Watch to patients who are recovering from total knee arthroplasty and follow them up for, for their recovery from surgery. What, what is important is that, uh, you know, a smartphone-based, an app-based or a technology-based recovery plan reduces the cost, improves patient outcomes and communication and engagement with the healthcare team. I think what is more important here to note is that it, in, it improves patient engagement. And that is where I think we, we, have, to, we have to understand where it is. This is again for primary total hips for the, for, the, for the sake of time. I'll not go into the details. So let me introduce uh, Recover Right to you. Okay. This is something that we've been working on for the last two years. It's a smart knee sleeve with sensors. And it looks something like this. So this, this is the prototype of what it is. Yeah. So this is, uh, uh, this is version one of the whole thing. And uh, what we do is we give this to the patients post-operatively to wear. The patient is wearing them. And this is connected seamlessly with our servers. So everything that the patient is doing at home is being recorded and is being transmitted to our servers. And at the treating team will have access to all of that data. What, do we, what, what data do we have access to? We have access to how much is the patient walking? What is the exercise the patient doing? What is the range of motion? Is there any fixed flexion deformity? What is the, what is the maximum flexion is the patient achieving? Also, you know, this also improves that uh, uh, the connect between the patient and as well as the treating team. So the treating team knows exactly what is happening with the patient 
and they can intervene at the right time and not wait for the patient to come to the ed or call call to the hospital regarding what it, whatever is the recovery what what, what the recovery is going on so this is our uh, testing uh, so this is currently in testing mode and uh, this is what what we are doing so we can collect how much is the patient walking what is the number of steps, the range of motion, the, the amount of staircase the patient is doing, and you know all, re, all the data related to the knee. Effectively, the idea is to create a virtual avatar of the operated knee. So we know exactly what the patient has done in the last week, in the last one month after surgery, and we know how the patient is progressing uh, in due course of time. So the I so we we all we all are talking about unhappy knees. We are talk, we all are talking about 15, 20% unhappy knees. I think the idea is to identify those unhappy knees in time and take appropriate remedial action before they really become unhappy for the long for the long run. And I think this is where uh, we need to we need to uh, collect data. So uh, uh, the a device like this, a remote monitoring device like this, will will help us to collect and analyze the data. First, all of this data will give us, uh, will, 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 will be able to correlate with what is happening with the patient. And then all of this is to identify and optimize outcomes. So the, the idea is that, of course, this is in the beta, mod, beta, beta testing stage right now, but the idea is to have a dashboard like this, okay, of all our patients that we've been operating in the last, say, maybe one month and have a flagging system. So we know that if some patient is unflagged and the patient is doing well based on the data that we that our system has received and the machine learning algorithm that the system is running, we know that these patients don't need any active intervention for now, but we know that there is a red flag for one of our patients, you know, and that is the patient that we need to go after, really see what is the cause of that problem and then try and resolve that issue. Okay, so, so that's there. Uh, just to uh, end with, this is the kind of conversation that I think we'll be having five years, one year down the line with our patients. So the idea is to identify the problem before the patient tells us the problem. Is really to be proactive in terms of rehab, really be proactive in terms of their recovery, and not be reactive like the current uh, like the current standard of care. So what does the future hold? The future is full of data. Okay, the ability to collect meaningful data, make sense of the, that data with the help of algorithms, and really. Uh, make active changes in the life of the patient uh, in the life of our patients all this is to improve the outcomes and reduce the cost of treatment thank you